Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Have another installment of our Stealing from Legend series. Some people call it borrowing, I get it. It's sarcasm. But anyway, Stealing from Legends, better title. So this one we're gonna rip off Dimebag. Now, Dimebag originally ripped off Eddie Van Halen with this concept, but he made it his own. And man, did he take it to some cool places. So I'm really kind of basing this off of how Dimebag will use it. Um, so before I get into it, though, if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. Um, so you, and uh, ring that little notification bell, too, so you'll know when I release a new video. Check out my Guitar Academy. It's got all my guitar courses covering tons of topics at guitarlessons365.com. Uh, we're having a lot of fun over there. We've got thousands of people in there already. Uh, it's, it's a really good time. And uh, if you like this shirt, Merchandise store. You can only get this there. It's my merchandise store. Link is in the description. All right. So, all right. Sales pitches are over. Let's get into it. So, this is called Symmetrical Licks. And now, uh, Dimebag, very well known, was a massive Van Halen fan. Um, and he took a lot of things that Eddie does in his playing, um, which is playing symmetrical guitar licks, which I'll explain a little bit in a, in a second what those are. Um, and then he really do, uses it all over his soloing style um, in a really a musical way. Um, and so it's, it's very inspiring to play with. So um, that's what we're going to take a look at here. So what is a symmetrical lick? Well, it's basically taking the same fingering pattern that you have, say, on one string here. So if we did like this... Uh, fingering pattern, I mean, these three notes that I have here, it's always used like a three note pattern that he would use. Um, um, so this is uh, kind of a half step, right? So it's 11 to 12 here on the high E. And then 15, so a little three fret stretch. So, so he would find a pattern like that that he liked, and then he would take it straight across the string. Um, without any regard for staying within the notes of a key or a certain specific scale. So it makes somebody like me who is a transcribes music a lot, as you guys can always tell, um, it's a nightmarish thing unless you actually know the concept of what's going on. And that is what's going on. So now that, you know, after I got to know Dimebag style, I'm like, oh, okay, he's just doing one of those symmetrical things. And that's why everything sounds like it's just coming out of, it's coming from everywhere at the same time. So this is the concept. So you can see this shape that he's using here. He'll use it in the Cowboys from Hell solo. So this little. Now, usually a dime bag would play a lot of these licks, not all the time, like the beginning of the Cowboys from Hell solo. He was like really doing a lot of aggressive picking. Um, he was, you know, was amazing at that too. But most of the time when he does this kind of stuff, it's very legato based. So he will come up with a pattern, say like this. So you take these notes, pick the first two, like the 15 to 11, and then hammer on the rest of the lick. So hammer on 12, 15, and pull back off to 12, and pull back off to 11. So we have this. And, you know, I don't even know if he did an obvious pattern. It was just a feel thing of whenever you wanted to throw a little picking burst in there. Because um, it's not, they're not always the same. Um, but he would just take that pattern and just do some really cool things with it. In the Cowboys from Hell Soul, you see stuff like that. And he'll move it up to here. Now, another three note shape. Go 12, 14, 17 on the height. And then it'll really, one of his favorite things to do with this technique is, or this concept, is to do these massive stretches. So he does a stretch up here like this in Cowboys from Hell as well, which he's stretching from 12 to 15 and then 19. And then he'll take that across the strings and it creates a kind of a floating, kind of angular sound that is just out of this world sound. It looks like I mean, how cool is that? 
Now, as, as you can do any pattern you want off of it. So, um, another thing that he would like to take, like you had Eddie when he used this, he did it like the beginning of Hoffer Teacher when he did that, when he tapped the top. So, that's the same thing on every string. So, this little shape like that, he would take something like that, like Dimebag would take something like that little symmetrical pattern, right? And then he'll do a lick, a uh, kind of a descending three note lick like this. So that is basically just like, he would take that and just pull off the top three notes. Just pick the top note and pull off. And then he'll pull off 14 to 12 again, over to 15 on the B. So that's the second group of three, so we have this. And then the third group of three, which would be the 12th fret on the high E, and then pull, uh, picking 15 and pulling off to 14. So we ha the whole pattern is this. And then it'll start it again from the second string. And then the third. So he loved doing stuff like that, and he would do it with these monster stretches as well, like we did before. Now, how crazy does that sound? Because what's happening is you're having notes, it feels like everything's descending, right? By the way, I'm just doing the same pattern I did here. I'm just doing it with these this monster stretch. But because of this stretch, it makes some notes, even though you're descending, actually ascend. So we had this. So when you place this in a solo the right way, you can have those other... It makes musical sense. Now why does it make sense? First of all, the notes are going by so fast, there's no way you can tell if they're in the key or not. Second is your brain just subconsciously recognizes patterns. That's how your brain makes sense of music or anything. And it knows that this is a pattern. This shape, even though you're like, ah, I can't hear that, I can't hear what the shape is, your brain knows. Uh, and that, so it's kind of organizing things like that all the time. So when you take it to the next string, even though now you're suddenly in the notes that might not fit in the key that you're in, um, this pattern itself makes sense. And then when you, So it makes musical sense to your brain. So as long as you resolve it correctly, like Dimebag always did, he always set these things up in such a really, really cool way. Um, um, so if you know um, what to do, it you can basically experiment with your own shapes. Like you can say, okay, I want a shape here that is. Uh, so let's say we're this, we're an E here, right? So we have E, and we'll hammer on a major third, and then on top uh, the sharp four. So it's almost like a Lydian shape. Now the patterns, the shapes that I'm doing, the little licks, they're mostly legato based because he liked to do that. But you can just generate your own licks. It could be like something like that. All right, so it's an easy concept to experiment with. Just find. A, a pattern that you like. It could be something crazy. It could be like this. Whatever. I'm just messing around now. But they, if you throw one of those in the middle of one of your improvisations, it's not something you have to think out about uh, much. And you know it's going to create this kind of out there, kind of floating quality. Uh, granted, it's probably something that you're going to want to play fast. Um, if you just went through like this, I mean, it's all right, but 
it ain't nothing like doing it like that. So um, you can just have a lot of fun with it, and it's an easy thing that you can throw into your playing that'll immediately make your solos stand out um, and give, make the listener t do a, a double take pretty quickly. And if you throw in some of those big stretchy things, it's pretty impressive looking too. All right, I hope this helps. I hope this will inspire you to create your own cool licks in your solos. And I'll be back soon with another Stealing from Legends. Bye-bye.